Welcome back to the Overcomer Podcast, you guys. I am your host, Jennifer Lopez. Thank you guys so much for being here, for listening and watching from where you guys are at, in your, at work, in your car, in the shower, listening to this voice right here. I'm just kidding. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. If you guys didn't get a chance to listen to last week's episode, uh, where I was December 9th, make sure you guys check that out. But before you guys go, make sure you stay here for this episode episode because we got the one the only the man the myth the legend josh leva don't go nowhere now don't go no, nowhere but Thanks he for is me, girl. here you guys yeah yeah you guys this give me a, come on josh. <laughs> josh i'm so happy that you're here i'm so uh, grateful me too I'm, I'm i know we were like scheduled this last yeah. week and then it didn't happen i kind of had like bail on you uh-huh. and, and, but i'm glad we got to do it no for real thank you yeah. thank you thank you i i appreciate it sebas don't be mad at me oh he's pissed he is yeah I'm just kidding. No, no. I just start like no, podcast no. beef. Leave it to me to start beef for no reason. No, no. <laughs> Jenica didn't invite Seba. No, but they've honestly been wanting a platica over comfort little We got to do it. Thing. 100% like, got to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you always got my sister and you haven't gotten me, but that's what I was I know. We got to make that happen. I know. that's. Uh, you know what's interesting? Even just like being on this side of the like room, uh-huh. I'm just like, well, this is like a different experience. It's a different vibe, right? Yeah. Like I don't get nervous, but I, I felt a little like nervous. Because Everyone like, always gets nervous when they come. Yeah, even like we do a podcast every single week and I have like a hundred episodes under my belt and I'm still like. Well, we're going to start off with a, shot? a little shot. Let's do it. All right, cool. I'm ready. How old what are you, you? How old do you think I am? I don't know how old you are either, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26. Oh, I was. Oh, wow. Okay. I was going to say 27. That's my fine. gut, my gut was saying twenty seven. Uh, you know it's close. But you look great. They, uh, don't laugh. <laughs> you look amazing. Don't you really do. Thank you, thank you. Do people think, think you're older or younger? What do you they get? They think I'm older. You know what it is? It's not because of the way you look. It's the way you carry yourself. I do. Even yeah. when I first met you, you I was kind of like, I, I was intimidated. I'm intimidated you're by inti- you. You're intimidated by me? Yes. What is it's because you're tall. That's probably what it is. And you're just like buff. Like you seem like this fucking. It's all fake. Man. It's all an illusion. Really? I just do you're it for simp? for. Are you simpy? Simpy? Uh. Mm, no, no, not simpy, but I'm very like lovey. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, <laughs> Simp- I feel like this simpy? is simpy. Okay, explain, explain. Okay, simpy. okay, l- simpy. Okay, in a relationship, are you like the simp? Like, mm, mm, no, I'm the man, like oh. I lead. Okay, yeah, but oh, but you're not like cariñoso, like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm super, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm super lovey. Does that make me a simp? Yes. Really? Like, okay, say your girl, like, Look, I don't my know. girl's never going to pay for dinner. My girl's never going to open a door. All right. I'm going to yeah. listen to how Standard. she feels. I'm going to be intentional with our dates. Okay. I'm going to be conversational. I'm going to open like up that. about my feelings. But best believe, I'm also going to cuddle you, snuggle you, kiss you, hug you. Oh, you're a simp. <laughs> that's a sim I I li- but that's good though you're a man that you know you're you're honest about it i love you can't tell that though you can't tell off really the off the jump wow i'm the type like i want to feel everything good like i want to okay. feel movies i cry even i just because i want to i like feeling the movie what's your sign capricorn all right yeah. what are you i'm a libra is that good that's good are we compatible I feel like we would be compatible. There's one Capricorn that I'm not like, I don't really fuck with. Was it like an ex? No. Thank God he wasn't my ex. Gotcha. But, you know. I I don't really like, I think that there is some truth in the signs. Yeah. Um, I'm not huge on them, but I kind of like, like to see. Yeah. But like I can certain, I can see how certain signs when people tell me, I like automatically vibe. Like Mm -hmm. there's something there. And then the ones that I don't vibe with, like I also have seen it one time on an extreme level where I was like, well, we're not. Yeah, this is there in Aries. Well, hmm. I have to do something before. Oh, shit. You're going to take some salud? Okay, you know what's up. Is that Jamaica? Oh, with the whisk? With the whisk? <laughs> <With the whiz? laughs> uh, just so that you know. See, I respect that, and I appreciate Dude, that. No, for real? Do like, you take them? Do you actually take salud? There's a whole ass bag in that box over there. Okay. I always have them with me. Don't act. What's your favorite flavor? Favorite flavor has to be Laura's. That one's bomb. That one's bomb. You, so that one's energy. That one's energy, but Jamaica's my shit. Yeah, yeah, me too. Have you tried the Jamaica energy? Jamaica energy, yes. That one's good too. You know what? I used to like pop them like a... Straight, like a, like a, a dry scoop. I, that's what I do. Really? I don't even... I just do it for the benefits. Like, they taste amazing, they but do. for me, I'm like, I just need them to be functional. Well, you guys, you know, if you guys didn't know, Josh owns Taste Salud. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, the freaking best. You have the sleep ones. It's incredible. Bro, yeah. my dreams? Yeah. Wild. No, they're insane. I have to, I, I kind of had to like pull back because I was like becoming a little like dependent on them. Like I couldn't sleep without taking it. And I just like don't want to be 
That like person? Dep- yeah, that person who I just like, I need to take something to do something. Are you a person like that depends on a lot of things? No, or, not like, at all. But habit? Mm, I am a creature of habit and I'm also addicted to caffeine. So maybe well. I do things. Cheers, man. Like that. Yeah, cheers. 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 Cheers to the salud. Good podcast. Salud. Cheers I'm excited. Salud. Yeah. I like that. What's it? <laughs> what is this? Tequila? Yeah. Okay. Imagine. Delicious. No caritas. You can't do caritas. It was my first one, Josh, okay? It's the middle of the day. <laughs> What's today? It's today. Today's Thursday. It's yeah, Friday. Thursday. It's Thursday. For the podcast, it's Tuesday. Yeah. So we're yeah, we're in, it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Don't don't do what we're doing on a Tuesday. Or do, I mean whatever you yeah. pleases your heart, whatever you guys feel better about. Okay, so I kinda wanna know. Okay. Who I because I, I told you before we started, I'm like, I prefer not knowing anything about a person so like we can let the conversation flow. I don't know anything about Josh. Yeah. I wanna know where you're from. I know you obviously you, you've been in social media and all that. How did that start? Where did you grow up? Where's your family from? All that good stuff. Okay. Um, I'll make it quick so it doesn't like, this isn't like the whole podcast. Right. Uh, I'm 33, by the way. Oh, you're right. I didn't yeah, guess. 33. I was thinking 28. 28, really? Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, With a, a 28 and a half. Tw- <laughs> you're like, maybe 29. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, uh, let's see. I uh, I grew up all over LA. Okay. Um, uh, I was raised by a single mom. Wow. Uh, my family is Mexican from Sinaloa, both my mom and dad. Love that. Uh, and uh, let's see, I started making YouTube videos when I was 21. I was kind of like an OG YouTuber. Okay. And I started making like sketch comedy. And that was like the first time I actually felt like I was good at something and really passionate. Uh, so I just like put like my whole heart into it. And then it just kind of developed into this whole career for me. Um, and along the lines, like I've always wanted to like develop my own like business and yeah. stuff. So that's kind of how Salud kind of came about as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's like a, my life in a nutshell. Where did you grow up? I mean, you grew up, sorry, where did you, what city? We moved a lot, but I always say Cerritos. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause I probably lived Cerritos from like 12 to probably like 10 years. So like okay. most of my chunk of like adolescent life was like in Cerritos. What high school? What does adolescent mean? Like, what age is adolescent? I've heard that word, and I just like I just threw it out there right I now feel like to see what happens. I think that's like preteen. Like okay, so yeah, eleven, no, twelve to like seventeen. Okay, so ish, adolescent ish <laughs> life, ish, <laughs> and like a little bit into my adult life, and uh, yeah. Well, you have siblings. I have. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm I'm one of seven. What? Which a lot of people don't know that. Like, it beca- wow. and, and it's it's interesting because uh, all of them are technically half siblings. Okay. I don't technically have any full, but there's one person, my, my brother, his name is Mark. He's nine years younger than me. Okay. Same mom. He was on and the podcast, He was right? on the podcast. Yeah. I, when I say half and I talk about him, it breaks my heart because he's like my brother. Like, yeah. he's all I know as like my brother. Uh, but the other ones, like, uh, I'm not I'm not super close with. There is, I do have a sister who I'm, I'm close with. Um, but yeah, so we're all kind of spread out okay. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, okay. Yeah. I don't know how you would do that with seven. I have five. Yeah, but you grew up. Did you grow up with them? I grew up with See, them. I didn't. It That's was just the one. thing. My mother made it like a thing. Like you, I could never say that they were my half siblings ever in my life. Oh wow! And they were. They were. They were all your half. But yeah. Oh, so same situation. Same okay. Situation. Wow. I have all have my brothers. I have two older sisters, two and two brothers. Are you the middle? I am. You give the me second, middle channel vibes. Middle channel. Really? Yeah, you give me middle vibes. Yeah. Why? Is I don't that know. Bad? It's just, no, it's just like what it is. Like, you're just, like, kind of, like, you're free-spirited. You kind of, like, do what you want. You're not too worried about the others. You're in your own lane. I guess. No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, yeah, I have I, um, my – I'm the second youngest. Okay. So, it's my – I have an older brother before me, which he would technically be the middle child, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. He doesn't give middle child. He gives very mama voice. Oh, really? But, yeah, I love him. Anyways, beyond the point. Um, so, how did Te Salud come out? Um, I, uh, like I said, like I bought, my mom's a entrepreneur, okay. like real estate agent mogul. Like she's just a boss. So I've like, I've always seen that, um, like that business mindset. Wow. Um, so I knew like when I, even when I started my YouTube channel, I treated it like as like a business. It wasn't just something that I just did for fun. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. Like I, I immediately, I was like, okay, how do I capitalize this and expand on this? Um, and, uh, yeah, I just knew that I wanted to, once I developed like an audience, I was like, how do I like expand on this. Like I want to do so much more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just always, uh, was taking like supplements, like, like health supplements. 
like pre-workouts and stuff. Yep. And I just noticed that there was like no flavors that catered to the Latino community, like at all. Mm. And uh, one time I came across like a protein or, or some sort of BC, it's some sort of supplement. And it yeah. was like, I want to say it was like horchata or it was a Jamaica or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is such a brilliant idea. idea. I love this. And this was like back in 20. 12 2013 so uh yeah i held on to this idea i was like okay i want to create something with agua frescas and uh that's kind of when like i the, the the idea started and then back in 2020 i met this guy who's not my business partner his name is tyler mccann and he was working at this company called muscle farm which is like one okay. of the largest supplement companies at the time they were massive um and uh we was we were working out during covid and he told me he's like do you know what I do for a living? And I was like, oh, I have no idea. And at that time we were working at this like private facility that he worked at. So anyways, he took me around. He was telling me that he like does like product development. Right. And I pitched him my idea. I was like, hey, I want to create a product that caters to the Latino community and really highlights these authentic flavors that we have to offer that are completely missing in the market space. Yeah. So he loved the idea. And originally he was just going to kind of help me out. And then I think he saw the potential in it as well. And I'm so glad he did because he was able to like elevate the company on such a different level level that I ever would be able to just because of his expertise and experience mm -hmm. um and I always say like he has strong suits I have strong suits and it, they just work together so unbelievably well like he has more of like uh you know just a background in like in developing supplements and manufacturers and right. shipping and <laughs> supply chain that I have no idea um and I have the expertise in like marketing and obviously culture and uh just networking with people so it's just it's just become this thing that I did not expect to be so big it's it's wow. crazy no uh, honestly to yeah. be in your target target walmart or amazon next year we're going to be in like even more retail bro it's that crazy. is crazy yeah it, I, I, and i think i feel it more because it's latinos yeah because yeah, yeah. i feel like it's you have to work twice as hard yes a hundred percent and even that then like i feel like these like uh like I, we I've seen like these mega companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, what I'm trying to say is like our product is not completely brand new, right? It's right. like we didn't invent the hydration, the right. energy space. Like right. there's been these other products, but the way we're doing it, the way we're branding it, these companies are, feel like it's like so innovative. Like they're like, oh my God, this is like groundbreaking, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And I'm just like, I mean, Agua Frescas have been around before me, before generations, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah. I, yeah, it's just cool. I'm just really excited. I, I love really that. Excited. No, I honestly, and it, I, Best idea you've ever had. Oh, honestly, I agree. I agree. And like, I don't know how much better it can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I and I w w w do you have any other ideas? Um, I want to do like cans and bottles. Okay. Like that would be like the next step. But Ooh. no, I feel like this one. Okay, so I feel like in my career... I got really lucky with social media. Like I hit it at such a right time and like it kind of exploded. And I got this opportunity to do something I was really passionate about. And then I kind of like just to completely be honest, like I kind of feel like I plateaued and then like, mm -hmm. I just felt like I ruined the opportunity to really do more with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I got complacent. Like it wasn't lazy. enough, like weird. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, when Salud came about, I feel like I got the second chance mm -hmm. to do something and I'm super grateful and I'm like, I'm not going to blow this. <laughs> I like love this and I'm super passionate about it. So Ooh. yeah, I mean, I want to be like as big as these big companies. Like, I don't see why not. Like I want to be like the Gatorades, can. the liquid IVs, like, I want to be in that category when people speak about salud. Dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Which I'm in a weird place because I'm like, how? Like, I like being the face of it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't just want people to think of me when I think of salud. I want it to be like bigger than that. Right. So I'm always like in this weird spot where I'm like, I don't want to talk about it too much because I just want it to be its thing. I know this product is good. Let the you product the speak product for itself. Do. Yes. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree. But at the same time, like I am the representative of it, right? Yeah. Like I know the story. I know it. Like I, I feel like someone has to represent it at yes, the same time. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. because it's like, okay, who is this person? Or like, where did this come about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I get like a healthy balance between the both. Yes. Yes. Um, where did okay so you started youtube at 21 you said 21, right yeah did you did, what did you want to be when you grew up that's a good question uh man i didn't know i didn't know you i know? had so many jobs at growing up i probably had like eight jobs doing like everything um i want i knew i wanted to do something where i uh some sort of entertainment mm. like i knew like even before like the first thing i ever wanted to do was like i wanted to be a motivational speaker like i was like you, i'm gonna i want to i want to speak you could do that I, I, and you know what, maybe later down the line, like once I get enough credit, like I, maybe I will. Um, so that was kind of like the original goal. So social media kind of gave me that, like it kind of fulfilled that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, yeah. Motivational Dude. speaker. 
My mom was big into like Tony Robbins. You know Tony oh, Robbins? Yes. She would like listen to those tapes over and over again because, uh, you know, she came from nothing. Yeah. So she need and she didn't have anybody like a mentor or anybody like helping her. So she would just listen to these tapes literally like, just that's all I would listen to. Like How was that for you as a kid though, seeing your mom? Uh, it was, it was hard because I really saw her go through like a lot of struggle. Uh -huh. Um, and I'm super close with her and, uh, yeah, it, but it was, it was really also like rewarding because she seeing where she's at now, like she lives the life that she's dreamed of uh -huh. and talked about. Like even when, she, when I was younger, she says one day, Mijo, when you're older, you're going to call me and uh, you're going to say, where are you mom? And I'm gonna say I'm in Europe. Uh -huh. And that literally happened like two months ago. Uh -huh. I was like, where are you mom? She's like, I'm in Italy right now. Uh -huh. And I was just like, this is crazy. Wow. This is crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Props to his mom. I know, guys. for real. Yeah, shout out to Props moms. to her because <laughs> he wouldn't be the half of the man he is without her. Exactly. All those mamas. Well, yeah. okay. Before we jump into the next topic, let's take a shot. Okay. And then let's we're going to go on a quick break. Okay. And then we're going to come back Perfect, because I need All to right. blow my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do you have, like, a favorite tequila? Yes. What is it? I feel like I'm going to get so much hate for saying this, but I love Clase Azul. No, that's Casamigos, right? Oh, that's yeah. standard tequila. No, no it's good. Clase, Clase Azul is good. Yeah, but I feel like there's all these people that are like tequila heads, right? And they're like, no, 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 you can't like that. That's like has yeah. has a artificial. I would, yes. And I, But I like the artificial. Like I kind of. <laughs> I kind of fuck with the, <laughs> the stuff that's doing bad things in my body. No, but I. Preservatives, I, that's what it is. Yes. They're like the preservatives, Josh. And I would love to try. Josh, why would you come up with the tequila? A salute tequila? Bro. So dehydrate and then hydrate with yes. sugar. That's not a bad idea. I need my temp. Or oh, oh, a seltzer, seltzer would be cool. I need my 10% once I got that you. Happens, you want okay? time? I got you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. All right. Welcome back, you guys. We have the amazing Josh Leva. We're here. Josh, I need to make it known because I know it's going to be in the comments. Okay. You are not single. I'm not single. Okay, man. there you go, guys. Okay, <laughs> let it go, ladies. I've already, I got so many comments because I have yeah. like a little chat, like for my podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you guys, let me know what you guys want me to ask. Josh, this, this, and that. And they're like, is he single? Is he single? Absolutely. No. No. I'm I, not. You are with a gorgeous, beautiful, loving girl. I love her so much. Thank you. Yes, she is. But, okay, anyways, <laughs> I. You know what? I thought about it right now that you went to the bathroom. Like, you look like you could be a Mexican. Ken Barbie doll. A Mexican Ken Barbie doll? That's yes. the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. <laughs> like, your face is just so smooth. Really? Like, do you take care of your skin? I do. And you know what? I had the worst acne in high school. Wow. Terrible. Like, I've been on Accutane. I had cystic acne. I'm 33 and I still break out. You yeah. can't tell. Well, I wear, uh, I'll be honest, I wear a uh, uh, tinted moisturizer. Nice. I got put on all that one time okay. and I was like, yeah, this is a game changer. And then occasionally I'll, like, I'll do like powder. Okay. Because yeah, I get super oily. Wow. So I'll just do like little things like that that just kind of help. What? Everyone, you know dude. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I love that you take care of yourself. I mean, I try. You have to. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, what was I going to say? Okay, so I want to get in the topic about your dad because I oh, watched man. La Platica, right? Okay. And you and your brother had mentioned one time, like, that he wasn't in your life or that you didn't have a dad, right? What's the story behind that? Because I kind of, I, I feel like it's not talked about as often, yeah. like, as a man, how it's affected you and you know you, you're macho but like you do like you said you talk about your feelings and all that stuff so i kind of want to know how like emotionally does it feel for you or what like the story and all that um so i have been very cautious about talking about my dad okay um and i've never have I, like i'll just kind of avoid it because it doesn't really come up okay. but obviously doing the podcast with sebas uh and do it for the amount of time i've developed this like comfortability okay. where i can open up more because i feel like the audience is just so receptive like the people who watch us are just incredible and the comments are always so encouraging and positive uh and i also felt like it's um the more i've kind of touched on it it relates with like a lot of people yeah. and it, that's also giving me more confidence because i'm like oh wow i can potentially help somebody or at least connect with somebody that like, yo, you're not alone and mm -hmm. your feelings are valid and all those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've never been asked about it. So it's kind of like the first time. So like okay. bear with me if I'm yes, kind of like yes. processing how to like, uh, like proceed it and stuff. But yeah, I did not grow up with the dad. Um, my mom raised me completely by herself. Wow. Uh, he had a, a baby with another woman okay. during the same time my mom was pregnant with me. Okay. So one of my half sisters, she's actually two months apart. Okay. Like she was born in October. I was born in December and my mom had no idea. And basically, um, 
she, the, the, the other, the, I don't want to call it the other woman, mm-hmm. but the other lady, uh, she's actually beautiful and like wonderful as well. And she like raised her kids like wonderfully. Um, she basically told my mom like, Hey, just to let you know, like my dad, I was about to okay. drop my dad's name, but, um, he's, he's, I'm pregnant with his okay. daughter as well. Uh, so immediately like my mom left him and, uh, yeah, I, truth is like he, he never really put in that much effort to be in my life. And my mom was super overprotective about me and the little effort that he did put wasn't enough for my mom. You know, she wanted, like, she was like, you drop the ball with me. Don't drop the ball with my son. And he did. And, uh, that just made me, um, shell up and just really want to protect my mom. And I, I'm her soldier. So like, are you her first son? I'm her first son. Yeah. Yeah. So like anytime that she was like, would say anything bad about my dad or what was like speaking out her hurt, I should say, um, I would just have her back. And I know that that's wrong because it probably created this, this own bitterness Mm -hmm. in my heart towards my dad. But I don't care. Like I'm, I'm a writer for my mom. Like, I don't care if that's wrong that I'm approaching it like that. Like I, and and people have told me, they're like, that's not right. You need to have your own relationship with your dad. I was like, I don't want to. Like he, I, he was not around. He doesn't deserve to have that. And I, and I will be honest, there was a good point in my life where I did try to build a relationship with him. Um, and it would just be like literally once a year and probably like the fifth year. I want to say I was maybe like from 19 to like 23. Uh, we were trying to like see each other, like every often, I guess. And then there was one time we were sitting at a restaurant. I'll never forget it. It was in downtown LA. We were sitting at a su- sushi spot called uh, Volcanoes. You know Volcanoes? I know Volcano. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, I realized that we only see each other once a year. Mm-hmm. And I brought it up to him. And then he was kind of in denial of it. Mm-hmm. And then I started processing in my head. I'm like, mm-hmm. is this just a checklist for you to like hang out with me on my birthday? Because my birthday like, is oh, December 27th. Time of year. Yeah, it's that time of year. And uh, yeah, and that was like the last draw. And I went, that, like I said, that was probably 2013. That was the last time I ever uh-huh. talked to him or saw him. I decided as a man, I was like, I don't want to speak with him. It's not worth my time investing in this relationship yeah. when there's other people in my life who care more yeah. that they deserve my attention. More. I am. I a thousand percent agree. Yeah. Well, has it affected you as a man though? Like what have without having a dad in your life? Cause I feel like there's things that you learn from a, a mom a man, or, or and, a then, mom, yes. and then you learn things from a man. Yes. 100%. And I, and I speak from experience and obviously I'm a woman, but from my brother's, like, I feel like there's things that you learn from a mother and then learn things from a man that you can't, that your mother can't do. Do yeah. you feel like you have lacked that or you haven't learned anything or, you know what I mean? I mean, I think th- the answer that I, it even hurts me to say this. Yeah. Like I did. I missed a big part of, uh, <laughs> we joked about this on the podcast. So I was like, you're, you're a great man, but imagine how great of a man you could have been if you had a dad. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. And it's funny, but I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, it's because it's like, it, like I said, there's things that you learn from your mother 100%. and your mother, like my, at least my mom tried Yeah. because my dad passed away when, when I was 12 and she tried to be both and it's honestly my impossible mom yeah, to you do can't, both. You can't do both. It's like little things like how do you teach someone to go pee? Right. Uh, how do you teach a boy to go pee right. when you're a single mom? Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. Or certain things yeah. like that. And just also we're like hardwired differently, yeah. right? So just like emotional things that I would go through it's, it's hard to explain that to my mom and have her really relate to that yeah. and understand that on such a on a level that i do yeah. you know like whether that be with girls or mm. just different things that i'm like going through relationships and stuff like that uh they're gonna cater to you and love you in the way that they know how but sometimes yeah. you need both like aspects yeah okay. um but at the end of the day like i'm so proud of who i am and I, i'm so grateful of the mom that i have so for me to dwell on things that I could have been or could have learned, there's just no point. No. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, I just take it for what it is. And uh, I just look forward to being a dad and like being able to like be that person for my son or daughter, whoever it may be. What do you want to have? A girl. A girl? Yeah. Really? So I've thought about this. I don't really care. I just like, you know, like not to be all corny and stuff, uh-huh. but I don't, I don't care. But right. if I had to choose, I definitely would want a girl, but I feel like I would want to have like a boy first. Cause I would put so much pressure on him that yeah. he needs to protect her. Okay. And I, and I also I want, that. yeah, I just want somebody like that to be able to like take care of her. Okay. Yeah. And I want them to feel like they're uh, like, I'm there, like they're my everything. And then they got to like earn it. I don't know. <laughs> like we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I just kind of, I think I'd want a girl. You want to yeah. have kids? Like you would like, I feel like cause a lot of guys don't, but do you want to have kids? Where I'm at currently in my life, I don't see myself having kids for like at least a minimum of three to five years. Okay, so so 30, 33, 30, like when you're like 30, 38, 36, I'd 38? push it to 38. Yeah. What? Yeah. I love my freedom. I love my schedule. Okay. So like just to be able to have to, I don't even, I'll be honest. I love dogs. I don't even want a dog. 
Like, I'm just like, I want to just be able to do my own thing. I want to okay. wake up when I want, go to work, work as much as I want. Just have that kind of freedom. And I know that's stripped away when, yeah. you, when you have kids. I also oh, have I a lot of family. So yeah. I kind of get my, my hit with kids, like, when I go to my family house. You know? you have, do you have a big family? Massive. Huge? Massive. Is it loud? Crazy? Loud. Insane. Chaos. Bro. What about you? Yeah, I do. Same thing? Bro. Is there a lot of kids? Uh, well, there's a lot of kids. Yeah. My, sister's, my sister has four kids. And my brother has two. But it's just, now that it's just us... Like before, like a couple of years ago, like it was really loud and really chaotic, but now it's kind of calmed down. Simmer down. Why? Simmer down. <sighs> oh, oh, just like family drama stuff. Yeah, bro. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'll talk about it on your podcast. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Would you really? Uh, are you an open book? I feel like you are. Legally, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that's really fair. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I don't mind. I I just I know where it comes from. Like I'm very quiet. Like you think I'm like really? very outgoing and stuff, but I'm very quiet. I feel like every interaction I've had with you, it's been like, you're like out there. Okay. Well, okay. Well, wait, it's been at parties. So it I feel like I kind of have to, Yeah. because like, I, and I feel like it's not as talked about either, like at events or whatever, like you kind of have to show face. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You and have to put on. Yes. But obviously it's fun. Like yes, it's of cool. I'm with people that I love or whatever, but I'm very, honestly, I'm very quiet. Do you, would you say that you like are a people person? Ooh. Like, do you love people? For the most part, obviously there's a lot of people out there that suck, but would you say, why you do like, you, you say <laughs> no? Look, I have trust issues. Oh, do you? I okay. really have with like most issues. people with that you meet a in lot of people off the gate. Yes. So it's kind of like, I have to like warm up like, and, like I don't want to get spiritual or whatever, but like I kind of have to see like a sign. Like if I feel like, like especially like Shadi, whatever she's here right now. Hi, Shadi. I, <laughs> I feel like I have to like if I I knew that I had to take care of her. Okay. So I like I, oh, gotcha, I draw a connection gotcha. with people. Yeah, yeah, that was obvious like, to you. Yes, like I gotta I'll take care of you and I'll be there with you and whatever. But like there's so you know I gotta I gotta test the waters. Like what gotcha. do you like you know? Yeah. Like I vibe with you. I love Sebas. I yeah. love like the people that you know Karen and everybody that's within because I feel like everybody can relate to each other. Yes. Do you feel like you have like that group of people too though? A hundred percent. Yeah. Where it's effortless. Where yes. you're just like we're all just all on the same everybody page. Everybody understands each other. You don't gotta other. over explain things. They yes. just get it off the jump. Like you're like I just okay I get it. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. Like yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. For sure. No. Interesting. So uh, are you in a relationship? I'm not in a relationship. <laughs> I'm not. I can tell. Oh my God, Josh. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, that was I harsh. haven't no, been. No, I'm joking. no, no, no. I haven't been in a relationship for a long time. And I think that's because I'm just very picky. I have high standards. Do you yeah. have high standards as a man? I do. I do. Yeah, I what do. What are your high standards? Uh, Like the the list of them? Like what? what? Like what is like your top like three? Like this girl has to have this, this, and this. Uh, I would say emotional intelligence. Love that. Uh, yes. Uh, I want them to be like driven. Okay. It doesn't have to be work driven, like necessarily work. I just, I like people who are passionate about things. Yes. So like pick something and like if you're Do devoted it. to it. Yeah, I love that. Okay. Uh, and then the third one would be like um, just kindness. Like okay. be kind. Not to everybody like around you. Like I want you to create that environment, like this like safe, welcoming space for people because I love hosting and I just... I want people to feel welcome the and same loved way. and kind. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to go like for them to come back and be like, hey, like she was a little weird with yeah, her or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, everybody, yeah. I like you can have those it. two qualities, yes. but if you don't have that third one, that might be like the, that, the ice, like that's it. That, that's a no-go for me. What's your, what, okay, you as a person, do you feel like you have like- Wait, what are yours? Oh, <laughs> hey, hold on, why hold would up. you ask hold me? Up, hold up. Okay, look, good hygiene. Really? That's like top? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. If, like okay emotional intelligence i will agree with you yeah i feel like i'm at a point in my life i don't have any time to waste okay i can't take care of you in like certain like if you have daddy issues even as a man if you have daddy issues like i'm sorry like oh baggage yes interesting wait go back to the hygiene part so like <laughs> have you dated guys who's just like terrible sometimes yeah wow like, so what does that mean like what like is bad teeth like if you like if your teeth are like yellow you're telling me everything about you. Oh, interesting. Yes. Like, so, like, are you paying attention to hair? And Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Like, the way they dress. You're not and paying attention as no, a man? I, I am. I'm just curious, like, how important is this? It's important. It's, but, like, top tier important. Okay. Okay. Top tier. I no, this is good. I'm very, okay. This is, <laughs> this is okay, like, hold insight. On. <laughs> okay. I have, to, I have to have a man that's, like, very 
spiritually spiritually aligned. Okay. Like you have you have to know that there's a greater something greater than a you. A greater purpose. Because I feel like men have a high horse. Like they, they get on a high horse and they don't know how to get off. Like they're egos. Mm. If you have a really high ego, it's very unattractive to me. Mm. So I feel like when you have a spiritual almost like they think they're God. Yes, exactly. Mm. So I feel like me also like it's very important to me. Like as a I, I have a I'm very faithful. I love God and all that. So I feel like when we're together, like like we know like nothing is gonna if we're together, it's because it's been allowed to happen. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So okay. spiritually in that sense, emotionally as well, like and driven, I guess. A uh, driven too. Yeah. I just feel like there's nothing less attractive than a man that's not driven or that doesn't yeah. have purpose because how are you supposed to, how are we supposed to get married or how are you supposed to lead me yeah. into something? Like, how am I supposed to go with you? I'm supposed to yeah. hold your hand. We're yeah. supposed to go together and like go do this shit together. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. Um, so if they have those two qualities, <laughs> what? but they got some stanky breath, <laughs> no. they got some messy hair, bushy uh -huh. eyebrows, Damn. unibrow, you, you still date? No, but they're, they, they got those two qualities. Oh. Like how important is hygiene? Let's go back to the hygiene. <laughs> no, it's really important. I got you. And I, no, I, that makes I sense. Know, I think like, that's important for me too. Just, that's probably like, four. Look, the least thing that I will accept is like if if you're like my height. Oh. I I like tall guys. Yeah. So like I feel like if you're, you're my tall, height, I'm tall. I'm like, you're like five, five seven. Yeah, five, I was gonna say eight, five eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and it's hard. It's hard as a tall girl. No, yeah, like, yeah. it's annoying. Yeah. But I feel like you do have to be like at a certain level. But that's not a deal breaker for you. I feel. No, it's like not. if a guy's five it's ten, not. You're, not, you're not stressing. What's or, a deal breaker for you? Uh, probably like rude to like waiters. Oh, yeah. I've talked about this oh, before. Oh my god! Yeah, I can't stand that. No. I will, I can't be around you. Honestly, yeah. no, I agree. Yeah, I want. I would punch a bitch if you're it's, rude to somebody like for no reason. For no reason, just yeah. attitude. Like it's just I can't do that. It's a deal breaker. I won't. I won't ever. And also, like I pay attention to, uh, like how they maneuver uh throughout their day, right? Like for example, like. This is random, but if they came over to my house and we were having a glass of wine um, and we like got up to go to the, a different space or we got up to go to the bar, leave, whatever, right. right? Are they saying like, hey, can I grab that? Or hey, can I put these in the sink? Hey, do you mind mm. if I wash this? I know it's so little, but it just feel like there's just so con the consideration is the I, little I things just, matter. the little things matter. They really yeah. do matter. Yeah. Are you toxic? Do I sound like I'm toxic? I kind of, no, I, I feel like I'm, it might give me toxic vibes. <laughs> no, honestly, you don't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I am. Are I think you jealous? I, Are you a um, jealous type? No, I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. I used to be very toxic. Okay. Yeah. And I like think. Like what I, levels? Like how toxic can you be? <sighs> like going through the phone type toxic? Oh yeah. That's rookie. <laughs> I don't do that anymore Okay, at so all. what's like. No, no, no. Okay. Bro. <laughs> I guess it would be like overly insecure, overly jealous, okay. going through the phone, like. Yeah, just creating problems for no reason, okay. just out of like my own insecurities. Like that's toxic. What was, what was like your biggest insecurity before? I didn't feel like I was enough. Like I felt like I didn't have any value to provide, so that I would project that. Okay. Like I feel like if I wasn't where I wanted to be at in my own life, okay. I feel like I had to like make somebody like get to my level. Okay. That's bad. Do you go to therapy? No. 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 I feel like you you sound like a man that goes to therapy. <laughs> no. And I like. That's, I mean, that's a big plus for me. Yeah. Like if someone's going to therapy, like, I appreciate that, but you, you're very well, you have a good head on your shoulders. Yeah. I feel like I'm self-aware and yes. I, yeah. And it's, and I definitely think it's a strong Absolutely. suit, but I think that just comes from everything that like has happened and just yeah. like learning from relationships, mm. uh, and genuinely learning. Okay. Right. Yeah. Were you a bully in school? No, I got bullied. Really? I would say to the, not necessarily to the point where I was like getting like shoved in the locker room and stuff like that, but I would get like <laughs> ignored. I always oh. feel like ignored by people. Okay. Yeah. Would I have you be this sad about it? Yeah, I'd be so sad. Like I would literally like this is embarrassing. I would like eat st like my lunch in the stall just because I just didn't want to be around people because I just felt like Oh Josh. And, and then I developed this like pattern where I would like talk really fast because I wanted people to I wanted to hold their attention. Okay. So like, yeah, so the other day I was like at the mall and I would just like talk super fast. And we'd be like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> and then they would ignore me some more. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. When do you like what's like your biggest let me see. Let me rephrase my question in my head. Let me take a sip. Hold on. Take a sip of the salute. Let it help you. <laughs> no, let it enter your bloodstream. Let it, let it simmer. Did you go to therapy? Have you done therapy? I've done therapy. Yeah, I've it's super to. helpful. It's helpful for me. What did you feel like you learned? Do you feel like it's very... Well, oh, that was help? my question right now. Sorry. Okay. You can't take my question. I No, no, no. What I feel <laughs> like I've learned... 
again, Mm self-awareness and kind of just focusing on me. I had a, I had a problem because when my mom passed away, like I was very focused on my siblings. So I would take care of them. I would make sure that they're emotionally okay. I would make sure that everything was kind of done um, and forget about me. And so when something would happen, for example, like in their relationship, I would take it as my own. And you would feel that? And I would feel it and I would kind of fight for them and kind of get myself involved in things that my, it wasn't my place to get involved. Um, And kind of just... That's emotionally draining. Yes, absolutely. And I kind of like... I've, I appreciate that I've t- taken that time and like to learn and all that and to learn what grief is as well, even like in friendships, because I feel like there's like people that we lose in our lives for a reason. And it's kind of like, OK, learning to accept that, yeah. like learning to accept things for what it is. And, um, you know, I, I honestly love therapy. Yeah. Therapy is beautiful. I, I, I want to I feel like therapy would like benefit everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. That and that leads to my next question: Are you a guy that cries? One hundred percent. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because I feel not, like not, guys don't cry. Yeah. No, I can I can get there pretty quick. Really? Yeah, by like feeling. Aww, yeah, but don't get me wrong. I'm not a crybaby. Okay, yeah. are you crying in the movies? Type of crier? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and if I'm into a conversation with somebody that I'm really passionate about, like I'll get emotional. Aww. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good though. I'm telling you, I feel. I like to feel. And I feel like that makes you like I'm comfortable with you right now. So yeah. If, like. I'm like, hey, Josh, I got something going on. If I were to go on the platica and you were to make me cry, it'd be okay. Yeah, yeah. But with Sebas? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Sebas he'll make is, fun Sebas of me. Sebas is tough. He's tough. He's tough. But you know what? I think that's why we work so well. Like, imagine if we were both crybabies. Oh, <laughs> Everyone's no. just crying. I can't ever see Sebas as a crybaby. No, he's not. He's oh, not. And God. he's he's actually taught me so much. Like, just vibing with him on the podcast, just, like, conversing with him, it's, like, opened me up a lot, too. Aww. So, I th- and vice versa. I think you kind of need that. No, that honestly, dynamic. you need, like, there's that healthy but is he yeah. your best friend he's my best friend Aww. yeah besides my brother besides my brother okay. i say he's my best friend yeah that's yeah. awesome my sister's my best friend i wonder if sebas has ever done therapy probably not honestly <laughs> i'm gonna take a hard no <laughs> take a hard like, no. i'm just gonna be like and if he is you're lying that is yeah. the biggest cap but like you know he's a good person he's yeah. a good person no i will no, no no absolutely <laughs> he i would be so open to taking it just because i feel like i will i think with therapy you have to allow yourself to yeah. get there and if you, you have don't, to accept, like, you want to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, you want to hear it and you're open to it. And yeah. then you're willing to have that, like, humility within yourself to be like, damn, I am kind of messed up. Or maybe, like, I do need to work yeah. on this. You <laughs> know like, what I mean? Fuck, I actually do have problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Bro. me, it wasn't so much like, another thing I was processing right now, I feel like I've made a, so many mistakes in my life. Mm-hmm. And I've seen, mm-hmm. like, even though, going back to my dad, like, even though he hurt my mom, I genuinely feel like he made a mistake. Yeah. Right? Like, he fucked up. Like and you have that's to understand just what him. You have to understand that. And as I've gotten older, I've been able to understand that because of the mistakes that I made. And through that, I've been shown like an immense amount of grace. Yes. And without that grace, I wouldn't, I don't know, I would like crumble. Like, yeah. so that's kind of what I lead with. Just like I, understanding that we're all flawed. I agree. Yeah. Like, and I've learned that, especially like with my mom and all that. Like, I understand like she was, she was always hard on me about the, for example, she was always hard on me about uh, my sisters and I's weight, but that's because my grandpa was very hard on her. Interesting. So she, so she knew nothing wow. better. So I, can't, I a thousand percent agree. It's like, you got to have like that mindset of like, you got to understand where they come from yeah. too. Yeah. Like everybody has a story like, and that it all goes together. Do you think she together. ever like realized that, that she was projecting what she had gone through? I don't know. Interesting. I don't know because I feel like. Therapy, to you, it was obvious. To me, it was obvious. Once you learned that she went through that. Yes. To me, and like therapy and all that feel like became like a new thing recently. Like everybody started loving it and going to it and all that. But when it came like, and she never got that opportunity, but I understood her better. And like, there's other things that obviously I could talk about, like when, you know, whenever I get invited to La Platica. <laughs> but like, I always like, I understood like, okay. And for your mom as well, you understood what she went through. Yeah. I'm sure your mom wasn't perfect either. Yeah, of like you kind of like, yes. you learned together. Bingo. You yes, know what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. No, yeah, she she wasn't. And I, like, I always say, um, one thing I like learned from my mom is like, we're all flawed, mm-hmm. right? Like everybody's broken in their own way. And no relationship is going to be perfect. Even if you found your soulmate, the one, the, the man of your dreams, the woman of your dreams, right? So it's not so much about like searching for perfection. It's about, but 
focusing on like how they handle through the situation with like when they make those mistakes, yeah. like how do they, how do they reciprocate that? Yeah. How do they apologize? That's what I try to like focus on. And she did an amazing job at doing that. Like she would, she would make a mistake and she would be the first one to like apologize and take ownership. Yeah. And that is everything, everything. because you're all going to fall. Like we're all going to fall short. Like I said, what age does she have you? 32. Oh, okay. So yeah. she didn't have you young. No. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, was, was your mom young? My mom, no, my mom was young when she had her first, my oldest sister. She was 15. Wow. Yeah. Could you imagine having a kid at 15? No. I can't when imagine I having a kid 15, now. And my mom told me when I was 15, she's like, at your age, I had your sister. I could never imagine. Do you want kids? I don't know. I feel like you'd be a good mom. I get that a lot. Yeah. I do. But because I have nieces and nephews, they're like my everything to yeah. me. Like they're my life, my world. Like I have them on my will, like my trust, like everything goes to them. Wow. I, and I've always said this every, I get that question a lot and I feel like I would love to adopt first. Really? Before having your own? I think because I have a compassion for children that don't have families. Gotcha. That don't have families and that are kind of abandoned. And because at some point in my life, I didn't have any of my parents. So for like me, you f like got abandoned in like your own sense. Not, not, not that I was abandoned, but they both passed away very, when I was young. Got it. So I kind of just like, I've always had compassion. Like I would never want anybody else to go through that. Wow. Specifically. And if you can help, like, if why I can wouldn't help, you? exactly. Would you adopt so, like a baby or would I you would drop a baby? Got it. Okay. I think that's yeah. probably better. I, right? yeah. yeah. Emotionally. Yeah. For yeah. sure. But, you know, whenever the time comes, and I feel like I have to find that partner that agrees with me yeah. on that because that, I feel like that can make or break anything. Really? So yeah. if, like, they were like, uh, I'm down, but, like, we need to have our own kid first. Ooh. Can we have it after? No. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd, uh, may, I don't know. As long, okay. I get, I But you know what? Like, I could, I feel like, I could get persuaded because I feel personally, I would want to have like our own child first before adopting. Okay. But I feel like I can get persuaded otherwise because I see the whole like side of they're going to feel neglected coming into a family yeah. that already has like their own. Like I can, exactly. I can understand that. Exactly. Yeah. Like that That's makes sense. That's my thing. It's just yeah. like I rather, I want to make someone feel special. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. So I don't know. But are you cool if we go on another break? Oh, let's do it. Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to go on a quick break and then we'll be right back. All right, you guys, welcome back. Okay, so Josh, I want to know. You seem like a man that has a plan. Like, you're yeah, very organized and very, like, I have this in mind, this. Like, I want to do this, this, and this. What are those things goals-wise? Hmm. Like, what are your goals later on? Like, for yourself as a person, social media, Te Salud, the podcast, yeah. all that. Wow. Um, well, I, I guess starting with the podcast, like I feel like we're growing so much at like a really cool like rate. And uh, we like signed with like this agency. So just cool. continuing to grow the podcast. And I think like challenging ourselves with like the guests that we bring on. Uh, like I really feel like we can just continue to like elevate it and like in that behalf. For sure. um, and then with Salud, I just want to keep growing it. Like I feel like we're such a baby company. We've only started like two years ago and we've been so grateful to get into like retail and stuff. So the plan is to just continue to build, Don't. grow the company. And that takes so much work. It's like literally every single day trying to find new avenues, marketing schemes. It's everything we could possibly do to like get the product out there to people. So that's been my main focus. The podcast and Salud have been like my main, main focus. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I like, I, I love the relationship that I'm in with my girlfriend. So just continue to work on that. Um, <laughs> Josh, I didn't even no, I ask do. about her. That's nice. I love that. Yeah. But I feel like it's a part of my life. Like it's, oh, it's sure. a huge part of my life because I, I see how it like affects my every day. Like even my work, if we're like not okay, like I just know that I'm not in it. So it's just like, it makes a difference. For sure. Yeah. So picking the right partner is like incredibly important. Do you feel like that's the right, right, right one? I think so. Yeah, I think so. For, I mean, like, I think she's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, like you, I, you got to take it like one day at a time, for sure. right? So oh, it's it's sure. it's like that, and I, I think that's what like I just appreciate every stage of relationships. Like I'm enjoying just dating right now. Okay. Like people like ask like, when are you guys gonna get engaged? I'm like, I'm not there yet. Like I'm I'm here. I'm just. How long have you been together? We, we got together in April. So. Oh, so this yeah, year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm just. And that's nothing, that's nothing like, I don't think that's like an indication to the relationship like that it doesn't, no. it's not working out. It's just like, I just want to enjoy this, no. you know, and learn because I feel like there's so much to learn in, in people and it just takes time. So to, to automatically be like, this is the person I'm going to be with immediately. I think that's, 
It's, it's tough to say. Yeah. And I don't know how much I truly believe that. As like, I'm Latino, not, do you feel that pressure? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Do you believe in love at first sight? Do you believe that? Like, I, I have trust issues. <laughs> so you don't. I have trust issues. <laughs> do you believe in like lust at first sight? So it's more. Lust? Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Lust. Like I could look at someone like, damn, like, like, wow. But. Are you one to like, like. I don't know how to say this, but like fantasize about what the relationship could be. Or are you more like realistic of like how both got it? I have like a balance. Like, like I've, I don't know. Like I, I, I just, I, I feel like I have a lot on my plate where I have to be like, are you going to be able to fit in the plate? Mm. You know, like, and I feel like when you're in, you're in a relationship, it's a lot of attention goes to that. Yeah. And then everything else kind of spreads out. And I don't know if that as a person, it's like, I don't, like priorities wise what fits best but i feel like for me if i'm in a relationship like you said like if you're not good with her like you can't function yeah it does hinder it yeah so you, I don't know. no matter how strong you are in like your mindset and stuff like that i definitely think it does if it doesn't i don't think you're as invested as you think yes. you are yeah are you a person in love at first sight do you believe in that no 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 maybe like i used to when i was younger but now, as i've gotten older and like i just know where i want my life like there's just no way like I can, I can think somebody's like beautiful and be like right, in all of right. them, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'm not like thinking about, damn, we're going to get married. So like, would you, I don't, how, how do I say this? You obviously have to get to know her, the person. A, a thousand percent. Okay. But yeah. if she was like, not the cutest okay. person, are you still getting the chance to know her? Yeah, I, I think so. I would say so. Okay, like, cool. yeah, I don't think I'm like shallow in that, in that regard. Yeah. I mean, I think I have my own standards as okay. well. Yeah. You know, I don't have a type. Do you have a type? Like, I'm not Do like... Do I have a type? You know, like, there's like the tall, dark, and handsome. Like, are you a tall, dark, and handsome? Or is this like... I feel like you are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I feel like... Right now, me today, 26, I don't feel like I have a type. I just... I feel more emotionally and morally as a person. Like, you got to be right. So you, you'll date somebody that you're not super attracted to? Oh, I don't know. You see, that's a hard question. That, that is a hard question because, like, I, sh I don't, it's okay to say no, right? Like, okay, look. Like, I don't think that makes you shallow. Be see, like, no, I wouldn't date somebody that, I'm not attracted to. The thing is, is that, and I hate to mention it, but social media has a huge factor. And I personally don't want that person to feel any type of way because of my life. Hmm. I'm not saying me, like, I'm, like, attracted to you or whatever, but if you're entering my life, like, social media-wise, yeah. I don't want, because I've seen it already, like, with people in other relationships, it's like, I, they get so much hate, like, this, 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 and then they run away. Mm. So it's kind of just, like, then it makes me feel bad as a person, like, damn, like, you know, you couldn't handle who I am yeah. as a woman, or, like, my career-wise. Have you only dated people who are not in the social media space? No. You have dated people who are in it? No. Oh, so <laughs> Both of them can be no. no. No, honestly, I haven't gotten the chance to date someone that's been in the social media place. And I don't know if I would. I would probably feel kind of, I don't know if I would feel insecure because I know what it is behind closed doors. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, again, it goes back to the trust. It's like, are you being loyal or like what's going on in those DMs? Damn. Yeah, DMs are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you crazy. see what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah, kind of yeah. just like skeptical. It's like, mm. Are you the type to like need to know their like passwords and stuff like that to like <laughs> social media? Yeah. I, that's funny that you asked me because my friend, he was just on the podcast and we were talking about like, am I toxic or whatever? And I told him like, I would probably, I'd feel comfortable having your password. Am I going to, if you give me the need, if you give me like a little like weird vibe, yeah. I'm going to go through your phone. Ooh. I feel like going through a phone, once you cross that line, is dangerous territory. It is. Once you've allowed yourself to like go through their stuff, you're going to want to keep doing it. Yeah, you're right. It creates the path. It like you unlock that door and you feel like it's okay, open. Okay, but like it's if like, I don't find anything, you won't look I again. Won't go, That's I not true. Look again. No, you will. No, I won't. You will because now you're just no, like any I little thing. Because... Now you're just like you just gotta see. Now you just gotta see. No, I won't. Because if you're showing me already, all right, you're loyal, whatever. I have nothing to worry well, about. All right. I, I, Are you I, going through phones? I, like I said, no, not anymore. I genuinely, okay. I, I, I do not do that anymore at all. Okay. I, and, I, and I would appreciate if my, my partner didn't do didn't that either. Okay. Yeah. But um, I know that once you unlock that, it just becomes it this becomes little. It becomes like a cycle. Yeah. It could becomes a cycle. Also with like locations. Like if you have your partner's location. Okay. I How do you feel about that? I'm, I'm okay with it. But okay. like it shouldn't. Some people get like obsessed with it. Like they're constantly. 
Why are you looking like that? You do that? Yeah. Yeah, see? And I it's have like, locations. That's why it's like, oh, no, no, but I think that's fine. Having locations okay. is fine, but like make being like self-aware to not be just obsessively checking just yeah. to check. Because I don't think that's a good habit. No, either. no, no, I agree. Yeah. No, that's a little but people, like... But people do that. That's a little crazy. It's a little crazy. It's, yeah. It's a but like, crazy. I get it. I think like after a certain point you start dating somebody, like you, I think it's fair to have their location. I don't think that's wrong. Like that's, there's, no. there's anything wrong with that. No. And I don't think that's toxic I think either. it's safe because look, I, a lot of people have my location, but that's because... And I don't want to take it too dark, but that's because I used to be very suicidal. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, like, my sister has it. My best friend has it. A couple of people have it where it's like, okay, like, you know. Yeah. Obviously, now I'm not, like, thank God. But because situations like that, I'd be like, I'll be comfortable to get yeah. into. Like, yeah. in case of anything, you know. That's a, yeah, that's a like, very reasonable. You know, like, in, in relationships, too, it's like, say you're going somewhere, it's like, okay, what Make if your sure phone you dies? What if something happens? Like, I... I think of the worst. Yeah. You know? You really uh, do? Like, I, your mind goes to the worst? I, it does. So you, that's because I feel like I've been through the worst already. Yeah. Where I have to think, like, okay, so anything can happen. And that's probably, like, my trauma speaking. Yeah. Where it's, like, I, I've been through, like, something very traumatic where it's just, like, it comes out of nowhere. And unexpectedly, like, I feel like that can happen again. Do you feel like you're more, you, so you're more, like, you lean on the side of, being a pessimist than being like an optimist. No, I'm very optimistic. Gotcha. I am I am optimistic, but I'm very cautious. I'm a very cautious person. Yeah. So you're like selective with what you how you view things yeah. in, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. It's not just like everything is sunshine and rainbows for everything across your life. Yeah. John, I, am. I didn't know we were in therapy right now. Okay. <laughs> this is my therapy. I don't do therapy, but I just do podcasting. <laughs> that's been my therapy. And, and I love it, honestly. Yeah. And I've said it before, and that's why I called it over comfort because I love doing Things that make people feel uncomfortable because yeah. I feel like that's the only way we grow as people. I mean, you did it today by being at like asking about my dad. Like I've never been challenged in that way. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry about no, it. No, 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 no. It's good. I, I, I appreciate it's it. It's because I generally want, I, I feel like, again, like I said, like a lot of men don't talk about those things. Yeah. It usually happens to women. And what happens is that they call, the, they tell them that they have daddy issues mm. and it makes women feel like. Some people do have daddy issues, but then what about the men? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. having the absence of a father, like, I, and I think of my brother because my brothers, well, my little brother, our dad passed away when I, when he was nine, I believe. And then my young, older brother, he had gone, my, his dad had gone to jail and all that for, you know, some crazy shit. But. And, it, and I could see that in, in them, yeah. you know, like I can't help them because I'm not a dad. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a man and I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I see the lack and I'm like, I wonder if it's the same for Josh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like what, 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 like what you missed out on or whatever. For sure. I think if you would have asked me this question five years ago, I would have been broken down or I would have give you like this half ass answer. Uh, and it wouldn't have been genuine. And I think that it all comes down to like where I'm at in my life now. And I think this applies to a lot of other men where I'm secure in myself yes. that if you want to, if I was dating somebody and they told me I had daddy issues, I have no problem walking out that door faster than you've ever seen in your entire yeah. life. And I won't feel a thing because I know who I am. I know I have the people in my life who love me. I'm good. Yeah. So those things don't hurt. But a lot of people and a lot of men lack that confidence yeah. and that mm -hmm. secureness in themselves. So they take that and it destroys them. And then, or they not even destroy them or they shell up and then they become like there's just no emotional availability anymore yeah. to talk about those exactly. real things that are going to help you so much as a person we're going to go on a quick break and then we'll be right back all right you guys welcome back okay so josh as a man okay for all the men that are listening what advice can you give to people that have been in your position as far as like you know having an absent father yeah yeah what can you tell them that wow um damn I would focus on gratitude. I would start there because I think that if you're able to hone in what you have in your life currently, you'll realize that like everything is good, right? Like it's yeah. not that bad. And I'm talking like, think about the simplest things. We get so focused on like, well, I don't have the car of my dreams. I don't have this house, but it's like, but do you have a what way to get to somewhere? Mm -hmm. Do you have somebody that you can call if you're feeling sad or just to say what's up? Little things that you can just focus on. And I know everybody, if you really, really tried, you have at least one thing to be grateful for. And that's enough, even if it's just life itself. Yeah. So I think like just focusing on that, it's going to really start allowing yourself to break free because you know that you got, you got something that you can always revert to when you're feeling that discomfort, that scaredness, that shell, that shelterness mm -hmm. that you feel emotionally. All right. Okay. Next one. What advice can you give to someone 
who's looking to be an entrepreneur or start social media the way you did? Yeah. Uh, I would say take chances. Mm -hmm. That's like the biggest thing. Um, I didn't know anything about the supplement space when I first got into it. And it was just like this this like jumping, like, let's just see what happens, you know? Uh, and I think a lot of people are, are scared to jump because they, they need everything to be perfect before they have this idea in their mind. Like I need to have this right. I need to have the right cameras or whatever it is. Right. And it's just like, and I hate when people say that cause it sounds so cliche, but it's the simplest things like start, right? Like, are you doing something every day that's leading you towards that thing? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, are you at least like watching one video when it comes to, let's just say we're talking about influencers, uh, or like influencer space editing, you know, like it's easy to watch a YouTube video on like how to learn how to edit. Even if it's like cap cut, if all you have is cap cut on your phone and stuff like that. And I think people don't do, they're waiting for everything to be perfect before they take that first step. Just, and every day should be something that you take forward. Yeah. yeah. Like, how are you like, you're not just listening. Are you applying it? Are you applying it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. advice would you give? Ooh. Okay, let's, let's cheer. Salute to that one. For the first question that you asked, too. Okay. As emotionally, having an absent father? Well, that's a story to say on Platica. Yeah. But because there's, you know, the, the backstory. But I feel like as a woman, I've learned to not be dependent on someone that was willing to give me everything and i feel like but that 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 also goes hand in hand with like my mom because i was very my mom played both parts for me um so, i'm sorry not to get too into it because i definitely oh, want to say sure. this for our podcast your dad was not around at all my dad he was okay my dad he was around but he went to jail got it he went to jail for like a long time of your like adolescent a, he life he passed away in jail oh shit yeah he passed away because he got sick in jail and you know the system and all that stuff that they don't care but then I found out my biological dad two years ago. It's a story I will Holy say for you. Shit. Okay. <laughs> it's a story I will say for you. Wow. So I feel like for me, I've learned just to not be dependent on a man and kind of be secure as a woman. Okay. Can I, can I ask, can I, I want to yes. interfere real quick because do you think that that's limited you from allow, like giving a man his place, his place. and his role? Not to sound like, you know, machismo stuff, right. but like, I think that you need to have those roles. I, I agree. And it's not because I didn't have my dad around, but it's because I've been alone for so long because mm. my parents passed away when I was young. I kind of had to learn how to grow up fast and not depend on people in general because they kind of, at me, it like, it goes back to the thing. It's like any, at any moment, these, these things can disappear. So you need to take control. You need yes, to kind of, I'm kind. I'm kind of. I'm kind of a control freak, but I kind of just like I. I would love to for a man to take care of me and to do the things that you know a man should do. But you're um, not expecting that. But I'm not expecting that. You just yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, I actually like that, and I can appreciate that. Yeah. So it's not so much that you're like closed off on it. No. It's just like I can't do it because nobody's taking that role. Yes. Nobody's exactly. has stepped up to the plate to be exactly. like, hey, we're not doing this. Like we're. We're going to do it like this. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of just, I, I, and maybe that's probably why, cause I'm single. I, and I, I get it I a lot that I'm very intimidating. Like, I, but I just, I'm, I'm a woman that knows what she wants and what she needs. So I kind of just say, if you're not able to give that to me or to understand my story or my life or if my trauma or who, what I've been through kind of scares you away then that, I feel like you're not a man enough. Can I tell you something? Tell me. When I, you know how I said I was like intimidated by you when yeah. I first met you? I, I felt like it wasn't that I was intimidated by you, but I couldn't read you. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have this like closed off too. like nature to you. I and like, I remember when I like, uh, I saw you at a uh, Dintai yes. and we had that interaction. I, I remember I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, I don't know if she likes me. I do though. <laughs> I know, well, that's how I felt. But, and I started overanalyzing yeah, it no, and it sure. was just like, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel that. So I can see how people might get intimidated get by you because I feel so. like you're just more like you, you don't necessarily wear your heart on your sleeve. I don't because I feel like if people take advantage of that. Yeah. For, at least for what, me. What are you afraid of? Like people will take advantage of like, what are they going to take advantage of? Like, do you think in every aspect, like, Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I feel like because my family has been through a lot, a lot of like shit where like people kind of just come in and leave. Hmm. And so you feel like I'm going to open my life to you and then you're going to dip. Yes. So like, even then, like giving my number to somebody, is like a huge like 
it's a strain for me. Ah. Like, it's like, what are you going to do with my number? Mm. Like you're coming into my life type of thing. And I, I and Got it's, it. a, it's little things like that where it's like, I have, a, I, I have probably have to talk to my therapist about it, but like that trauma, like people just come in and out and unfairly. And we, and I'm a person that when you come in my life, I give a lot to you. I give a lot to my friends. I give a lot to people that I love and care about. So kind of like I would hope for the same respect. Mm. So can I ask, has any <laughs> boyfriend actually done that? Has they walked in and then walked out? Have they done your biggest fear? No, because I'm a heartbreaker. I stop Whoa, it before so you it cut happens. it in before they can even walk away. Yeah. So you, the sphere that you've experiencing has never even happened to you in a relationship. No, because you won't allow it. Yeah. So you don't even know if that know. would happen. Josh, fuck, bro. <laughs> how, how much do I have to pay you for an hour to be my therapist? For free, free night, night. <laughs> But you got to come on La Padiga. <laughs> tell Sebas, I will call him right now. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We're sure we're going to do it. Cheers. No, honestly. <clears throat> that was my last one. No, ooh, mine too. No, but honestly, I am an open book. Like, when you get to know me, like, I'm very... And I feel the same vibe from you. Like, I feel very comfortable with you. And I'm very grateful because I like, I, not that I'm scared, but like, I feel like, you know, I have a certain line of respect and I just, I appreciate you being so open and vulnerable and like making me feel comfortable as a person, you yeah. know, to be able to talk about it, to talk about things with you. Um, but like, like you said, like I, I it is, I have a wall. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a wall and I've I, learned, I, I'm trying my best to kind of let people in. Yeah. Little by little, but I have to see like your intentions for sure. And that's completely fair. Mm -hmm. But I think like sometimes we get so afraid of things and the things that have never happened to us yeah. or things that might never happen to yeah. us. We just get so caught up in the idea of what could be. Yeah, no, I yeah. know. I, I'm listening. Yeah. I'm going to take it. Take it in, Josh, okay? <laughs> I just feel like, okay, let's just say your worst fear comes to fruition, right? Right. You date somebody, you, you really like him. Uh huh. Then he up and leaves. Okay. What do you think is going to happen? Like, do you think like your life is over? No, it's not going to be so over. So why Absolutely. not take a chance? Like the, that because, fear is like, look, then I, what? Then what? I just feel like I don't want to have to feel that. The heartbreak? Yes. Like if you're going to walk up and leave, just don't even enter in the first place. That's fair. I do believe you that that's me? fair. Yeah. Like, but don't waste my time because I don't have time to waste. You're putting, but I feel like you're potentially putting an expectation on somebody. That's true. That you don't know where life can yeah. is going to take them I specifically, agree. right? Like, for example, like let's just say they walked away because they ha they were dealing with like some emotional thing that they couldn't handle and they didn't want to bring you along with them. So in fairness, they were like, I'm going to walk away from this relationship. There's so many possibilities. I don't think it's just as fearful as like people being like, I'm out because I got what I needed. And She's I'm like, out. yeah, he's good. <laughs> no, but I agree. Yeah. I agree. No, you're right. So but I should take a chance. I shoot my I, shot. I, I feel like you should. I feel like one time. Why not? Do, okay. Do you have Go friends? through the heartbreak. You know what? Because I'll tell you something. I've been heartbroken so bad. My first girlfriend destroyed me. Really? Yeah. And it was like, I felt like I was never, it was the, the, uh, the tiger in your king. Bed, was like, I'm never going to financially recover from this. Like that's how I felt. I was like, I'm never <laughs> gonna recover from this and then you come out with the whole business <laughs> <laughs> no i was like 19 when uh, it no, happened. No, yeah no, no. but it was like I, I was like i'm never gonna recover and i did and that's what my mom would tell me too she's like you're gonna get cut and then that cut is gonna heal and then it's gonna be a scar and that scar is gonna slowly go away and then you'll okay. look back like i remember that and it just doesn't mean anything it doesn't hurt there's no more pain so what i'm saying is like sometimes we get so like fixated on like i don't want to yeah. feel the hurt yeah. but like why like yeah, it's gonna hurt yeah. but it's kind of like part of life like there's so much growth and learning behind that. And then next time we'll do a podcast and you took a chance, I bet you your story, you're, you're going to like, this is going to look at it so differently. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I feel like I've seen that in my life in general. Do you have any friends that I can meet? All my friends are in relationships. Well, I have a brother. <laughs> <laughs> he's single and he's well, great. He's right, only 25 well. though. All right, well, and I feel like you need somebody older. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I just feel like, I can't do anything younger. Yeah. It's just. What's, would you go, well, how young would you go and how old would you go? Okay, I'm 26. I'd probably date 25. That's the youngest you'd go? 25. You wouldn't go 20. Yeah, 25 is actually Women good. are a lot more mature than men. Can I tell you the truth? What? You shouldn't date anybody under 30. As a man who I feel I like. I wouldn't. No, my highest would probably be 34. Yeah. Okay. That's actually not that high. Yeah. I, I thought you would go higher. You wouldn't go 40? 
No, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they, if they had like a young spirit. Like yes, they were like like yes. about it. And if stuff. you don't have kids, kids of baby course. mama drama, I'm not there for. Have it. you dated anybody with kids? No. I could never. That's no. that's 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 also like a not that I could never because my mom raised me single and so yes, like she you dated other people. It. I get it, but it's my personal choice. No, no, no. It's yeah. my personal choice. I've seen it too. Yeah. Like and even as like with my mom, like with her boyfriends, like the way that they would like kind of look at her kids, like it's a lot. Yeah. Or it's a lot of people yeah. to take to worry about. But I feel like if I was older and like if I was in my fifties and then I was still single, uh, and I was dating somebody and they had kids and they were like older already, like they were taking care of themselves, yes. I think that would change the story. Yeah, exactly. But like now if I'm like if you're like your child's like three and there's well, really what if like the the kid is a teenager? And like they're just very rough, like yeah. a no, lot I, more, oh, I see what more emotionally like aware. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it's takes a, it takes a special individual yes. uh, for like a man to yeah. step up and play that role. I feel like unless that other person had a kid. Yes. There like you if go. they both like blended family vibes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the thing: I I hate like being so like strong about that because I don't want to discourage women who have kids and think like their oh, dating yeah. life is over because it's not. It's really not. And I think like you have to just be okay with like some people that's just not what they want in their life and there mm -hmm. there will be other people that do. You yeah. know? Just there's, like you're, there's like certain people that wouldn't mind dating somebody who's super short, like a guy who's super short. And there's other women that are like they're like we're not doing that. Okay, would you do date a tall 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 person? Taller, Taller than me? Than you. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Dude, you're tall. But I'm not that tall. Like I'm 6'2". Like t tall for me it's like anything above 6'4" I'm you like know they're what tall. It is? tall. I think you're just buff. That's that what makes it you is. look bigger. Yeah. And scarier. Yeah. 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 It's all an illusion, though. <laughs> well, thank you so much, this Josh. Was fun. This honestly, was fun. I've had a really good time Me with too. you. Me it too. It was honestly like very heartwarming, and I just feel like, you know, it's dope. Yeah. I, I, agree. I, I had a great Thank you great for like day. asking me questions and like getting deep and stuff no, like that. Thank I, you I for was... asking me questions. A lot of people don't they ask don't? me questions. Well, you ask really good questions, and I'm like, what about you? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people don't, so I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, I think that a lot of people, like, podcasting is a, it's an art. Yes. You know, not to be all, like, corny and stuff. Absolutely. And I think, like, people come on a podcast, and they just, like, are expecting to, yeah. like... Like, they see it as an interview. They see it as an interview, mm -hmm. yeah, versus, like, it's... it's like, no. Yeah. It's just vibes. Yeah. I so think when I go over there, oh yeah, when you tell Sebas right now that you go over yeah, there, yeah, yeah. make sure you tell him, yes. I'm waiting. Yes. Okay? And you're going to go deep? I'll go. Like you'll be like an. I'll be comfortable. I okay. know. I've known Sebas for a long time. Yeah. Now that I've had this conversation with you and comfortable enough, I'll be down to do it. Did we meet through your sister through social media? I have seen. No, I met. I met Sebas a long time before. No, I'm saying you and me. You and me. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember either. But I feel I've like seen once we. Events. Yeah, and then I feel like we just kept running into yeah, each other. Yeah. But nothing like yeah. You know. So we're cool. You don't you you actually you vibe, I vibe with, me. with you. All right, cool. Yeah, so the dentai thought was all that was all in my head. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> no, right, no, no, no. I honestly I wouldn't have gone up to you if I didn't like you. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. You know. Who were you with? Were you with? I was with Val. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, with, yes. And then yes, with yes. my other friend, we're like, yes. oh, that's Josh. Yeah. Right? My sister had just done the podcast. Yeah, that's or so funny. Or she was going to. Whatever, and I had whatever. just run into you at the club. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, like a week ago, and then I was like, and I had taken my taste salute. With no me way. Day, oh, you party. showed it. And you but showed you were it. drunk. <laughs> no, I was so wasted. <laughs> I was so wasted. But either way, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. I oh, appreciate you, it so much. It. You're great. Josh, Layla, for you guys. La Platica. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, it was so good. It was a pleasure. Um, Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, follow Josh on all his social media platforms. We're going to leave it right here so that you guys can go ahead and follow. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Overcomfort Podcast is a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network.